today. Appreciate having you all here. And I see some people already on, ready to go. Uh, first, welcome to our new members. We got a Slyus, Rod, and John. Thank you for joining the membership. Appreciate you being part uh, and watching uh, all the stuff that I put out there. Really appreciate it. And of course, welcome to Scott. Appreciate you quite a bit, Scott. You've been uh, very loyal and appreciate you uh, being here today. Um, as we get started, um, we're going to be talking about Demetra. And here's the, uh, I've just sent a link to it. So if you want to pull it up and start looking through it. But what we could do, we could use your help by hitting the like button. Okay. And that's what we need from you as we're getting going here. If you have any questions uh, as we're going, feel free to ask. We'll kind of bring those up. Um, and that is our going to be our day today. So thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, we have John Trask here today from Demetra. John, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, could you start by just kind of introducing yourself and maybe just a little bit of your background? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me here today. Um, again, my name is John Trask. I'm the CEO of Demetra, and my background has mostly been in software development and supply chain management. So for the past 30 years, I've been building and implementing and consulting on supply chains around the world and finding ways to help supply chains become more efficient. Um, I've got a little bit of a background in farming as well and enjoyed farming as a child and come from a farming family. So uh, when we put Demetra together, it was the perfect fit of technology, farming and supply chain. Hey, that's awesome. I love that. That's one of the things that I like to do too, is I see things that are going and then I, maybe this is your software. Uh, that's why you want to be a software guy, but uh, you see things and then you see, oh, it could be done better if you did this. Um, and then a lot of times technology is the uh, the connector that makes that easier. So that's awesome. Another oh, thing, uh, I always have been calling it Demetra instead of how is it pronounced? Dim, uh, Demetra? I just call it Demetra. Okay, Demetra. Demetra, Demetra yeah. is fine too. Okay, I guess you would have to ask somebody who's Greek. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. And I guess that's the that's the uh, joy of doing things online, right? Is you're never totally sure. You read it a lot, but don't aren't sure how to say it. Yeah. Um. Okay. So I'm gonna pull up the website here. Do you want to talk through just kind of an elevator pitch of what it is Demetra does? Yeah, so we have a couple platforms, software platforms that are targeted at small farmers around the world. And, you know, with te technology changes over the last few years or last decade, farmers around the world, particularly in smart, small countries, have been adopting mobile phones and smartphones. And that puts a lot more capability at their fingertips. So we built a few applications, one of them focused on crops and small farmers, one of them focused on livestock, and then we have a specialty one focused on coffee. And what those systems do is they actually use a lot of different technologies and try to help farmers make better decisions. So we can bring in satellite information, weather information, soil information, sensor information, help analyze that with the farmer's regular information and make recommendations on how they can grow more crops, how they can reduce their costs or how they can mitigate their risks. And those are kind of the three big buckets that we're trying to work in. So here you see the uh, two of the applications, the connected farmer platform and that connected farmer platform is a mobile platform. It's on Android. It's connected to our blockchain and essentially farmers can go into the platform and enter all of their farming data, set their goals, set a geofence and and then get a whole bunch of insight. And maybe we can dive into the app a little later and I can I can show you that. Uh, the next one's the Demetra Livestock Guru platform and the Livestock Guru platform is really focused right now on cattle, dairy cattle, beef cattle and how to use technology to improve performance in those areas. And performance might be increasing the amount of milk that a, a dairy cow produces, or it could be um, mini minimizing the amount of health issues that are passed on from parent to child by making breeding decisions, or even how to minimize your feed cost 
while maximizing your output. So there's a lot of things that dairies are looking for, like increased milk fat in, in the uh, product that's being made. Well, those are dietary decisions that uh, a farmer can influence depending on how they're managing their herd. And then the last one there, Advanced Connected Farmer, really is focused at governments and it has a lot of functionality that may or may not be to a large extent in the base model. So these are more customized modules uh, targeted at governments. And, and we started really working with governments and NGOs. So uh, just recently, we, we've moved over to focusing on being able to sell direct to farmer. So up until October, um, most of our sales or all of our sales have been government-based or NGO or um, farming cooperatives. Okay. Now this is very, this is very fascinating. So for those of us who aren't farmers, which I, I'm not a farmer, although we have some in the comments who are, um, can you talk about like what kind of um, percentage maybe, what, what kind of revenue is, how is this helping the farmer? Right? Are they, are they making extra money and how much extra money? I know some of these are kind of maybe too broad to answer, but you know, are you getting a 10% increase in cow milk or is there a way we can quantify some of the benefit that you're providing? Yeah, it really depends on the environment and the farming practices that the farmer has to start. And then what can we do to improve? I'll give you an example. We're working on a project in, in Indonesia. It's around coffee. And when we look at coffee, there are fertilizer decisions that coffee growers can make. Um, we recently had a a soil test that came back and had a pH of about 4.5. And typically you want coffee to be a little right around six or a little bit above six. And as we analyze that and look at different ways to increase growth, we know there's a mathematical relationship between pH and coffee performance. And there's a lot of other factors that are involved. So I'm simplifying it quite a bit. But if we can increase the pH of the soil up to about six, on coffee by using lime or calcium carbonate or making other decisions, we can increase the farmer's revenue about $3,000 per hectare. And in the case of this particular farm, um, you're looking at more than doubling their income. And, okay. and so, and then there's, you know, net decisions you have to make. How much fertilizer do you put on? What are the right decisions for your farm? But in that, that farm, particularly is making about $2,000 for a $1,000 investment, they can make 3000 more. Okay. So it, it has potential. We're not necessarily talking about a 1% increase or something like this, but this has the opportunity and a lot of uh, good data in a lot of cases can radically provide more, uh, more income for farmers. Is that oh, fair to say? Absolutely. We, we see some farmers, um, who've been farming for years, making just farming decisions based on just like I did what my grandfather taught me. And with data around soil health and nutrition, we can double, triple performance in some cases. That being said, there's loads of farmers who are doing a really good job and you may only see a incremental improvement, but at the same time, you're great. You're getting a lot of validation by the system around your decision-making. Okay. Nope. That makes a lot of sense. And I think people, uh, I'm just amazed over and over again, how, uh, people underestimate the value of data. Like people think, Oh, to be a farmer, the most important thing is hard work, which is true. You need hard, hard work, but that data is just so valuable in the decision-making process, putting the hard work in the right places. Um, and so this is just another example of that. Um, can you talk about, so how many people are using this already? Is it semi-usable already? Is it fully usable already? Can you kind of talk about where in the life cycle uh, you're at? Yeah, so we we started, uh, I guess, early in 2021 and did a POC <clears throat> with a large government on cattle. And that has progressed to a full-blown system. And we launched that full-blown system early this year in, in April end of March, April this year. And, and that system will be tracking at full scale about 14 million cows. And now we've sold that to 
some other governments and some other organizations that'll add to that. And, uh, and so the user base is from a, a research and study perspective, but it's affecting about 6 million farmers right now that are using the data, but that data comes through the government organization that's using the system. Um, and then we built the connected farmer platform and that was originally built and launched in May and the connected farmer platform is really built around um, right now crops and satellite and reporting using a mobile phone and we've signed up between the two platforms uh, cooperatives with about 20 million members and we've just been starting onboarding them this year we just started another onboarding session in Indonesia on the connected farmer platform uh, working with uh, a university in Indonesia and they're out training 3,500 farmers who are joining the platform right now this week as we speak and uh, so we're targeting millions of users in the end uh, at the moment we're just sort of kicking things off and taking it slow from an implementation perspective to make sure that we can get the software right, that we can make sure it's running bug free and and uh, really focus on having successful projects that generate huge value for the farmers. Okay, very cool. Um, can you talk a little bit about uh, how then this brings revenue for you? Like how do the farmers pay and how does this uh, translate into revenue for, on your side of things? Yeah, so there's a couple different ways. Um, starting on October 15th, we have a cloud model of Livestock Guru going out and farmers will be able to license it themselves directly. Um, Connected Farmer is released in limited countries right now. And at the end of the year, it'll be going out globally. And again, there'll be a, a licensing model there. Um, and then for the most part, what we're seeing is the cooperatives are buying the system or the government is buying the system and then they're allowing farmers access to the system so we like that model the model works really well um, it gets us a lot of farmers all in one shot gets us access to a lot of data um, and really allows us to make an, an, an impact and serve a large group of farmers with a specific goal with the the new cloud models that are coming out um, we have the ability to pay with Demetra tokens. <clears throat> so an individual could buy the platform with their credit card, or they can go and buy some Demetra tokens starting October 15th for livestock and at the end of the year for connected farmer and get a 20% discount off of the individual rate. Now, the other cool thing that we're doing is we pay our farmers for their data. We just don't charge them and ask them for that. So as they load their data, they earn points. And depending on how much data they load and you know whether their um, data is being loaded throughout the season and correctly so that we can get more information to help more farmers, we reward them. So today the model is if a farmer signs up on Livestock Guru and they give us their data for the year, or connected farmer later in the year and they give us the data for the year um, and we can use that data although we anonymize it it is involved in our machine learning to make recommendations to other people and provided to universities so we may not say this is james pelton's data but your data is aggregated into a data set with ten thousand other farmers or hundred thousand other farmers um, we'll pay you for that so right now you can actually earn back more in Demetra than you pay for the license. Okay, all right. And uh, the audience, um, I do have a passive income audience. So they're kind of wanting to know, they always like to skip ahead to that to those types of questions. Can you talk about the Demetra token and maybe where you can buy it? I, I can show on the website here, um, but just ways for people to potentially make money through this. Yeah, so we're pretty excited about the token and and what's happening with the the launch of of the platform uh, to the world. So the Nemitra token right now is available on KuCoin, Gate, Bitrix, and Bitmart, and Uniswap. And we're always looking at new 
exchanges. So hopefully in the next year, we'll have a few more exchanges added to that, to that mix. Um, the Demitra token itself um, has about a billion tokens and that circulating supply is incorrect. So we'll get you updated circulating supply information. But essentially, there's uh, 200 million tokens have been minted. There's about 60 million of those tokens that are just in trading floats. They're not being used. Um, the rest of the tokens have been put out there for uh, investors. For the most part, team members, we've been selling about a year now. September 22nd was our official launch on KuCoin and Uniswap. and uh, tokens are, you know, other than the market being down right now, uh, tokens are going quite well. We're, we're pretty excited about what's happening with them and, and how they helped us build the platform. And we have a, a good community right now. We've got a uh, number of token holders. We've got a good staking program. And so, you know, you can go buy your tokens. You can set up a portal account, send them to the portal account and, and stake those and and staking right now is at about 13 percent um if you drop out of the staking program you start back in at six percent and then have to work your way back up to 13 but you start immediately with 13 percent staking and uh, and again the markets are there kucoin bitrix bitmark gate and uniswap are the current uh, current places to get Demetra tokens can you talk about how um, is your revenue going to go back into the the Dimitra tokens? Like, are you going to do buybacks or anything like that? Or how does the revenue affect the token price? Yeah. So today the revenue is coming back in through Dimitra tokens. Like that cooperative in, in uh, Indonesia, they just paid their last two months of bills with Dimitra tokens. So they went to KuCoin and they, bought some tokens and then they sent those back and locked those. And they're hoping to get some of those back from a, a data sharing perspective in a year after they've populated the data or their 3,500 farmers have, have populated the data, but all of that flows back in. Um, we have a number of other areas that flow into the system. We have a marketplace and the, the marketplace um, has the ability for people to post ads and and sell their produce or sell their equipment and we earn money there we have iot sensors that we sell and use on different projects and iot sensors can be quite lucrative uh, i told you about a project with uh, 14 million cattle over a number of years but each cow has a 50 dollars sensor on it and with a 50 dollars sensor we can add a whole bunch of health information and, and really help them out so we sell those through the marketplace. Um, we have a data sales partnership with Ocean right now. So we've set up with Ocean Protocol in order to um, resell some of our data in a Web3 version. Um, and then there's a, a bunch of upgrades that are available. All of that flows back through the token. And, and essentially then from treasury perspective, we make a decision on what do we do with that? How do we, how do we continue growing the platform? We've got, uh, you know, 125, 130 people now on payroll and are constantly building. So there is a, a need for cash as we can continue to expand our functionality. Um, and I, I guess that's the, the basics of it. Okay. We are, uh, we are selling into a huge market. Everybody in the world eats and not everybody eats processed food that, you know, everyone needs vegetables. Everybody needs proteins, uh, however they get their proteins and, uh, you know, a huge, huge market. There's 610 million farms in the world. We really focus on small farms. Um, small farms is about 570 million farms in the world. Uh, in most small countries, uh, agriculture can be 30, 40, 50, 70% of GDP and uh, multi-billion dollar market. 
And, you know, farming to me is a lot like crypto. Farming is a community activity. So farmers learn from each other. They socialize in communities. They work in communities. And from a, a farmer marketing perspective, we get so much word of mouth exposure to our project and all of the great things that we're doing with the system right now. Uh, we've been been very lucky from that perspective and have signed up deals in 14 countries just in the last year and uh, and are seeing a lot of interest. So we also have a couple other pieces and I know I'm not giving you a chance to talk here, but no, that's um, fine. People are here to he hear you. Not I me. Mean, they hear me all the time. So that's all you. So we also have the ability for token investors to sponsor farmers. And so there's a lot of smallholder farmers in the world don't have a lot of income um, and are and are looking for ways to improve their farm. So and we have such a great community of of token investors who bought our token in the presale and and bought our token since then. We've set up a model where in the portal you can go in starting this month. And actually, if you're locking your tokens for a one year period, for every hundred dollars you lock, um, you get a sponsorship of the uh, one individual farmer. So that's coming out on October. I think it's October 15th when the new system comes out. But essentially, right underneath your My Wallet, there you'll have a sponsor tab. And then you'll be able to pick one of uh, five or six different projects that uh, need financial help and lock your tokens and add, add, add in one farmer or any, num any multiple of that that you want. Okay. All right. Yeah, no, this is very cool. Uh, very exciting. Uh, we do have some questions from the audience. So I want to uh, bring some of those up. Um, first off, uh, do you want to talk about, um, are you heading towards that 20 country partnership target in 2022? Do you want to kind of talk, talk about what your reach is right now and maybe some of the goals behind that? Yeah. So we have signed up about 70 reseller partners in the world. So sales partners, and, and those sometimes are channel partners. They're, they're software companies or agricultural companies that sell into a country already, or they're individual people who uh, work for Demetra and sell into those countries. We um, right now have signed up deals in 14 countries, um, but all 70 of those partners are in almost 70 countries and they're knocking on doors and they're looking for um, cooperatives and governments to come on board. We have a, a huge pipeline of more than 100 deals that are in discussion and and at this at this point we're we're signing three four deals a month and and some of those are fairly nice deals they're all hugely valuable deals so last week we signed a, a deal in panama um, and they do business in panama and belize and do coffee and cocoa um, so that one isn't added to the list i don't see any challenge in hitting 20 countries in the next few months it just comes down to how quickly do the deals come on board and, how, and when can we onboard them yep no nope, that makes a lot of sense and uh when was the company launched how long have you been in business so there's two answers to that question officially dimitra spun off from another company that i had in may of 2021 so that was the official incorporation of dimitra before that we were building the software for Demetra in a, in another company that I run that builds blockchain systems. And we had built that for one particular customer and then saw the merit in the system and thought, well, this should be its own company. And actually the previous company that I was running, we've really wound that down and, and are just finishing up our last contracts so that we can focus a hundred percent of our energy on Demetra. Okay. Nope. That makes a lot of sense. Um, and what's on the roadmap? So let, let's say, let's look forward a year. 
Um, we'll start with the year, but if everything is, you know, working well, where do you kind of see yourself in a year? And then maybe where do you see yourself in like five years? Where do you see things going? Yeah. So, I mean, there's two key streams. One is software development and one is, you know, customer and project development. And, and so if I start with software development, we've got the two platforms, one really focused on crops and small farmers, one focused on livestock, and we're continuing to add technology. Um, we've built it in 18 languages already, the, the connected farmer platform. Um, and those are the 18 core countries that we either have deals in or are very close to having deals in. And so there's a little hint in there for people who are researching us and they go, why, why do you have a, you know, America in there? Well, we have America in there because we're very close to a deal in Ethiopia. And and then, so from a technology perspective, we have a team that's working on data science and our data science group is just doing machine learning to, to pr provide better analytics. We have a, a group of um, PhD and, and graduate degree agronomists. So all of those people are analyzing different crops and helping us with analytics. So we just have a fantastic team. And then We've got this team of software developers who currently have everything on Android. Livestock Guru is on web. Um, and we're going to expand that across all of the platforms. So we're adding in iOS um, and already have an iOS team starting to build out the platform there. And, and then we're looking at um, a few governments where we have to offer on-prem. So we have to build some supporting technology for that. So our roadmap for technology is there's years of work the way it's sitting today. And then on a, you know, on a distribution and sales front, we have the, the new cloud model that's coming out on October 15th and at the end of the year for the, for the two platforms. So there'll be ongoing marketing for that and bringing people on board to the platform, making that platform easier to use. Um, user experience is really important to us. So lots of work in that area. <clears throat> and then how quickly can we grow country by country with that application? We do have some, we use satellite a lot and we've built um, sat 20 satellite reports since we started for farmers. And we're constantly building more satellite reports where we can pull down a, a geofence, look at a farmer's land and make recommendations based on the spectral analytics and radar analytics that are coming off of the land. And so there's more of that to go on. Um, and then we have to make that easier to use. So how do you take a soil sample and combine that soil sample with a satellite report to provide value for the client? And we see a lot of interest in our clients in getting satellite reports of their farm. And they're, they're quite simple, but you know, you can pick up information around fertilizer usage and moisture on your farm. So we see a ton of users coming to us in, in that area. Um, so we have that sale and that sales an individual sale to a farmer. And then we step back and then we have sales to cooperatives and, and cooperatives um, will be a big, big segment of our business. It brings a lot of users. Um, it is a group of people who've organized themselves into a community in order to help each other improve. And we see us fitting into that really well. Um, and then what we've done on the Indonesia project and some other projects now, is we go partner with a university and so in Indonesia, there's a university in the Solok region. That's the region we're working in right now. It's part of Sumatra. And um, we've got a grant from the government and we've provided some funding from a training perspective and people into that. And essentially all of that um, is allowing the students to go do research on the farms. So Monday this week, we've been training these guys for a while now. Monday this week, 30 students went out and started working with the farmers 
using our system and the benefit to them, not only is the grant that they got from the government, but the data that they're going to get that's going to help them with their graduate studies. And they're out teaching people how to use the system. So as they teach them how to use it, they get a recommendation. Maybe the farmer doesn't make, you know, understand the recommendation or needs more explanation. So now we have somebody who's got a bachelor's degree in agriculture and is pursuing a master's or PhD can help them with that. And, and at the same time, they're going to be out there for 60 days working with 3,500 farmers, you know, spreading the word of Demetra, um, working together on how we can gather better information for their research studies. And, you know, really focusing on helping those farmers in that area. And we've got that same scenario going right now in India and Brazil and Bolivia, and uh, Colombia, and, you know, more and more countries, Uganda. So there's just tons of that work going on. Hope that answered that question. Yeah, no, I think that's that's amazing. I think uh, it looks like the audience is pretty excited and I think they they like what you have going on. Um, if so, if you're a farmer who's watching, what's the, how do you get involved with this? Do you just download the app or do you need to get in touch with you or how do farmers get involved? So today somebody has to, um, be a member of a cooperative or a government that's receiving one of the two platforms effective October 15th, the livestock guru platform will be available on our website. So there'll be a new button up top that says livestock guru, you click on the application, you can go in and pay a, a certain fee and uh, register for the app. And then you can go in and set up your geofence and start loading information about your livestock. On Google Play right now, um, some countries can see our app and some can't. So we have a limited number of countries that can access the app. And the full-blown app will be going out to the world closer to the end of the year. We're, we're hoping to launch in December. So today, if you want to join, um, really it's, it's through those cooperatives or it's through the government. But, you know, patiently in a couple of weeks, we'll start onboarding country by country, you know, more and more people into a a public SaaS type environment. Okay. And then I want to say a couple things and then I'll say how to get involved uh, for non-farmers. Um, but first off, um, a lot of, so a lot of projects I have on my channel are more like get a lot of passive income today um, from this project. This is one of those that's more of a longer term. I mean, you're getting, you know, you can get the 20% or 13% APY but this is not necessarily a passive income play. This is, hey, investing in this uh, is more of a long-term play that, hey, over time, this is going to get go out to more and more people. The Demetra token is going to be more and more used by people. And so you're looking for long-term gains in this. Um, so that's the first thing I would say. But yeah, if you want to get involved as a non-farmer, just financially, um, you just go to the DMTR token, click markets here. Um, then you can go down here and buy uh from any of these exchanges of course kucoin is my kind of go-to but then that it'll take you right to dmtr is the token where you can you can trade dmtr for usdt if you're logged in so you can buy here um and then you can stake in their uh staking platform the dimitra dimitra portal here um you can stake in here and then there's going to be and this is going to be redone there's going to be more stuff coming up here um, and things like that. So that's how you can get involved uh, financially there. Is that, did I miss anything? Did I get that all right, John? No, that's exactly it. And the staking's been great. Um, from a buyer's perspective, we have a huge number of people staking. I mean, almost 80% are staking and holding. And, you know, I watch every day anybody who's withdrawing from the staking and the number is so low. You know, maybe we get uh, a handful of people unstake per month. Um, so I, I really thank our community. They've been, they've been very, very loyal to us. And, uh, you know, we we're now to the point where the, the public facing system is, is rolling out and we're already making revenue on the, 
on the government side and the NGO side. So, and this is where the utility comes from the token. You had it exactly right when you said this is a long-term play. Like we're, we'll add, you know, thousands of users in, you know, October, November, December. And, and as time goes on, adoption will continue to rise and that drives utility of the token that drives more licensing that drives more sales that drives more um, iot device usage it drives more data that we can aggregate and and use that for ourselves or aggregate it and sell it to universities or share it with universities so it uh, it is a you know i'm canadian so i'll use a snowball analogy um you know it is a snowball and and we're putting all the pieces and packing that snowball together now and october 15th and, and later in the year with connected farmer we're kicking that off and and those components of utility that we've designed in the system will start to become fruitful and we really thank everybody for their patience in this this last year we you know april we started really becoming a revenue generating company with some of the government contracts but the bulk of this is going to come with those farmer rollouts which is all of the people okay no very cool um and we had a friend mr c uh, who's a faithful channel watcher are you helping new prospective farmers to get into their first farm seeing as much of the current farming community is aging out the next generation of farmers is quite low is that something that you're helping with also you know, so I guess it would be how you de define get into their first farm. One of the goals of the cooperatives that we're working with and the governments we're working with is really to address this problem. You know, we're working on a project in Nigeria and one of the challenges in Nigeria is that farmers are aging and the kids are leaving home and not coming back to run the farm. And so how do you get the youth more involved or get aspiring farmers more involved in farming. And, and technology is one way to do that. It makes it more interesting. It, it, and you know, there's a great opportunity here where tech savvy individuals, you know, young adults who want to get into farming can really help the generations above, you know, ahead of them applying some of this technology and make farming, you know, the new, their new career. Um, food costs are going up. Revenue is going up. The ability to produce income in farming um, is greater than it has ever has been. And then in the future, we have some roadmap items, one around um, input loans and uh, one around trade financing and another one around insurance. And so we've run some trials with that and and have had some discussions with customers around how to move that forward. Um, we'll be building that out in 2023 and already started building some of it out for testing in 2022. And those loans could become a, a format to help a new farmer get involved. It, it wouldn't necessarily be a loan for for land for them to buy the land but certainly to uh, get some of the pieces set up like buying the seeds and fertilizer and and so forth okay awesome very cool well hey i think that is all the questions that i kind of had um i posted a link again if you just want more information you're not quite ready to buy the token or you have more questions um i put a link to follow that follow dimitra on twitter uh, hop into their Telegram, join them in Discord. Those would probably be the three three places where you can go get more info, get to be, become part of the community. Um, you can buy the Demetra tokens now. Um, but John, do you feel like there's anything we didn't touch on or anything that we missed that we should probably talk about before we wrap up here? Yeah, I think the one big one that's exciting for me is how farming is involved in the environment. And... You know, we designed a, a system and we're working on a project in in India and this individual project in India may be the largest land reclamation project in the world. Um, Two million farmers right now. And with this project, what we're trying to do and, you know, most people have heard. Soil has been 
degrading over the years. And, and part of that's through farming practices and part of that's through urbanization and, and different challenges that are happening. But what we've learned in the, in the last while is how you take care of the land um, and run a farm sustainably. So this project is really around how do you analyze the soil conditions? And we start with satellite and we supplement that with sensors. And then um, the NGO in the area has an, an army of support to go out and help move the project forward. And we can make recommendations to say, you know, if somebody's growing and, and one of the core crops is safflower, if somebody's growing safflower, how do you do that more sustainably? And what do you do to your soil every year to make sure that you're building good organic vitality in your soil and protecting the soil, leaving it better, go back to my Boy Scout days, leaving it better than when you got there. And, uh, and that's a big part of what we're doing. We're working on a project right now and uh, in Brazil, and, and one of our objectives there is to help farmers apply for greenhouse gas credits. We can evaluate how, evaluate how much soil with satellite a farmer is storing on their farm. We can also survey all of the information that's needed to process greenhouse gas credits. And if a farmer is sustainably farming, they can have access to funding around the world. The challenge with the funding is how do you gather the information? How do you pay for it if you're a small older farmer? And one of the pieces we're, we've got a lot of it in the system, 70% of it in the system already. The other 30% we're building in in the future um, to access some of those those funds. Okay. Nope, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Perfect. I'm just looking over the comments, see if there's any final questions here. Uh, I've got, it sounds like they have a good goal. This seems like a good long-term play. I'll look further into it. Um, very cool. Well, John, I appreciate you coming on and talking through this with us. Again, I'm always looking for interesting things. And one of the things that I'm passionate about is technology making people's lives better. So like I'm used to, you know, my kids on their cell phones and things like that. That's not necessarily making their lives better. And it's yeah. like, oh man, you're you're not using technology the way that it's supposed to be used. And so something like this um, is just awesome. Uh, I, I'd love to help farmers too. I think this could be huge. Like you, you've been talking about in the uh, in Africa. Um, I have a lot of connections to Africa, and um, they're they're needing things like this. So I just love what you're doing. Love that technology is a part of it, and love that even the blockchain is a part of it. Like I just think it's it's cool. It's all my favorite things put into one uh, one project. So appreciate you coming on and just sharing that with my audience. Well, thank you for having me. I, I really appreciate the time and the time with your community. And uh, I'm so excited about this project and everybody we talk to gets excited about it. Um, so, you know, we're looking forward to good things in the in the future. And uh, every day, you know, our 125 people get up and and try to help those farmers. So, you know, you and, and your community, you can all participate and and come in and help those farmers as well. That's awesome. Yeah, I can I can tell just from talking with you, like this is obviously not a cash grab where hey, I just want to make some money, but you I can tell that you want to help in the space, you want to help people, um, and money comes out of that. So that's uh that's incredible and just appreciate what you're doing. Keep up the good work. And my audience, thank you guys for watching. Please do go do at the very least, give them a follow on Twitter. Um, but yeah, check out Telegram, check out Discord, and potentially buy some of the tokens if you think this is a long-term play and if you want to help. So not only is it an investment, but it also helps them accomplish their goals. Um, so it's kind of a two double-edged sword that you're you're doing there with that. So appreciate you guys. Appreciate you guys showing up every day and watching. Um, but yeah, audience and John, thank you so much. And let me know if there's anything I can do to help in the future. All right. Thanks, James. Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks a bunch. Hope Take everybody care. has a great rest of their day. Thank you, guys.